Let's talk about all of this now with Sophia Kai, Axios national political reporter, joining from Florida tonight, where she'll be covering the Republican debate on Wednesday night, and Joseph Moreno, former federal prosecutor. It is great to see you both. So I first want to start with you, you Joe. Do you think this is bad for the former president that he's attacking a judge who will decide this case? Hey, Sumi. Well, normally I'd say yes. In any other case, it's bad to antagonize the judge, especially when it's at a bench trial and there's no jury, so the judge decides everything, both guilt and damages. That's in a normal case. In Donald Trump's case, he clearly feels he has nothing to lose, right? And that's kind of the judge's fault by ruling up front that Donald Trump has lost, so he doesn't really give much incentive to behave. I also think he thinks he's getting political traction here. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the polls are kind of cooperating with him. So clearly Trump sees this as politics. This is political theater for him. And in his mind, he may have lost legally, but he may actually think he's winning politically. Okay, we're gonna get to that political side of it. Joe, I just wanna follow, follow up with one more question because we've seen Trump's legal team say, listen, we're not getting a fair trial here. This is a case that has already been decided we might put in a motion for a mistrial. Do they have a case to make? I don't think they'll get, well, no, they're not going to get um, a, a approval of a mistrial motion at the trial judge level. I mean, he's gonna say no. He's gonna say, I've governed this trial just fine. And therefore Judge Engron is gonna refuse that sort of a motion. What they'll have to do is raise that on appeal. And so that's clearly where Donald Trump and his legal team feel that their avenue now for any kind of legal relief is. This is a lost cause at the trial judge level. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think he can posture all he wants, because he feels like my day in court is not so much what's happening now. It's in the months and years to come when I raise these issues on appeal. Yeah, really good point there. Sophia, coming to you in Florida, what do you think is really at stake here for Mr. Trump uh, and his family, for that matter? I mean, a lot is at stake. The attorney general is asking for $250 million, which is a lot, not just for him, but for anyone. And I think he takes this personally. I mean, in court today, he is in an environment that he does not control. He is told to stand. He is sworn to tell the truth. You know, and he is in a much smaller room than he's used to with not the same kind of crowd. That is all very uncomfortable with him. And he took every opportunity to give what seemed like a mini speech. I mean, this reminds me of how Trump liked to turn the helicopter gaggles into mini press conferences. At one point, he lashed out, calling the attorney general, saying the fraud is her. I mean, for him, it was political as much as it was a legal day in court. And Sophia, how does this trial fit into the larger picture of Mr. Trump's legal battles? So, you know, this is one of four indictments he's facing. Um, I think politically, every single one of them is an opportunity for him to, you know, in his mind, kind of uh, up his numbers in the polls. Uh, earlier this week, he was speaking to Florida Republicans saying, every indictment for me I wear as a badge of honor and I'm indicted for you. And so you can kind of see how uh, his team is thinking about this strategically. This fits into an entire week of campaign activities. Mm. Like I said earlier today, he was uh, earlier this week, he was uh, speaking at the Freedom Summit along with most other Republican presidential candidates. Later tonight, after a full day in court, he'll be holding tele-rallies uh, for the Republican candidates for governor in Kentucky and Mississippi. Uh, followed by that, on Wednesday, he'll be doing a counter-programming rally in Hialeah. So, wow. you know, okay. to him, um, you can see how this fits into the bigger picture uh, of the political campaign. Yeah, Joe, how do you see this? Because we've talked uh, at many of the previous indictments uh, and cases, of course, as well. So how do you see this fitting into the larger picture? Well, you know, this... Putting aside how you feel about Donald Trump, this actually seems like a solid case in New York. This is a very aggressive law. I don't see a lot of loopholes. So I think Donald Trump has real exposure here. It might not be the full quarter of a billion dollars, but it could be pretty substantial and it could end this business after 50 years, right? Um, 
I kind of get uncomfortable when the attorney general comes before the cameras. I mean, if the case really is that strong, why does she feel the need to do that? Mm -hmm. An officer of the court really should not be tweeting and going before the cameras and talking about the defendant before the trial's even over. I kind of wish she would back off. And so that kind of puzzles me because it seems to feed Donald Trump's role as the victim. So I don't know if they're purposefully doing that, but I kind of wish, as, you know, as a lawyer, as a former New Yorker, that does make me a little uncomfortable how the attorney general is conducting herself. And that's really interesting, Joe. Sophia, coming back to you and looking at the political implications of all of this, we mentioned coming in the CBS poll. A lot of attention has been paid to this new New York Times Siena poll. And I think we have a map that we can pull up as well that shows uh, what it has revealed that in a head-to-head -head matchup, the former President Trump is leading the current President Joe Biden in five key swing states. If you look at that, Sophia, how worried is the Biden administration about these numbers? You know, I think publicly uh, they are shrugging it off to say we're still a year out. But I think it raises a lot of concerns for Democrats um, who obviously want Joe Biden to be doing well. But look, the, the, the poll shows a couple of things. One of them, which is key, is that all of these five battleground states are states that Joe Biden won in 2020. So number one, that should be of concern. Number two, it also shows uh, Biden uh, doing worse than he did previously uh, in with Black voters and Latino voters. I mean, these are constituencies that he needs to turn out. Right. Um, the reality is they still, uh, uh, they still are primarily voting Democratic. But, um, you know, Trump has made some inroads and the poll ha actually shows Trump taking 22 percent of black voters. That is quite a bit, um, as well as doing better with Latino voters. Um, and so those two issues combined um, should be uh, of concern to Democrats, including Biden's inner circle. Right. And Joe, I just want to quickly get your take on that as well. Well, I mean, I think, look, I, I think Democrats are relying on the fact that after this civil trial, there were as many as four criminal trials that could be sandwiched in between January and November of next year. So I think there's going to be a torrent of coverage about Donald Trump's misdeeds. And as Sophia points out, a year is a really long time in politics. So my guess is they're not overly worried. That being said, though, Joe Biden has some vulnerabilities and he can't rely on Trump's prosecutions to carry him over the finish line. So I got to think they are publicly putting on a brave face, but I got to think they're a little worried behind the scenes. All right, really interesting conversation, Joe and Sophia. Thanks so much for joining us on BBC News tonight. Thanks, Omi.